Okay, um, we're particularly interested in the number density on these upper and lower surfaces uh, of, the, of the part of, of, of the system that the beam passes through for most of its trajectory. Um, so we're going to add um, an average operator that we can use in post-processing uh, to compute averages over these two surfaces. So I can right-click on the definitions node, choose model couplings and click average and then um, I want to change this to be a boundary selection and choose these top surfaces. I like a, a second uh, average operator which I can use uh, to compute averages on the bottom surface here. Okay, great. Now what we'd like to do is solve the problem with a range of different values of theta so that we tilt our wafer um, within the vacuum chamber and that's very straightforward to do. Um, we just simply add a parametric uh, sweep to our study. So I right click on the study node, choose parametric sweep, uh, sweep over uh, the parameter theta although I could add um, any of the parameters we've chosen and indeed you could combine a sweep over theta with a sweep over the pump speed. In this case I don't really want to do that but I'll, I'll just sweep over theta. I can type in a list of values here or I can um, set up a range uh, using this button. I'm going to start in this case at zero, go up in steps of 20 degrees to 60 degrees. And now I, all I need to do it, uh, is to right click on the, the study one node and choose uh, compute uh, to solve my problem. By default in Comsol we're going to get three uh, plots uh, without doing anything. So we'll get the incident uh, molecular flux, the pressure and the number density uh, plotted on the surface of the chamber. You can see that although we can see all the exterior surfaces, we might want to see some of the interior surfaces in the model. Um, and so what we can do to do that is um, go into the data sets uh, section here, uh, choose solution 2, which is our parametric solution, right click on it and choose duplicate. Then what we can do is add a selection to that duplicate solution. and if we change the selection to be a boundary selection, start with all boundaries, but then we can manually remove uh, some of these boundaries just so we can get a look inside the chamber. Let's get a good look in there, like that. So now if we want to uh, view the sort of cutout solution, we just switch to solution three, and we can see right inside the chamber. Similarly, we can do the same for the pressure, uh, plot that, and the number density. Perhaps we don't like using the units of Pascal for pressure. It's really easy to change those units. We just go in here. Let's say we prefer Tor. You can see the range of uh, units that are available uh, by default in Comsol, but let's go with Tor, uh, and we can see um, we're getting about 0.2 millitor of pressure at the, on the wafer surface, which is the maximum pressure in the system. And we can see right inside uh, our system like this. Now we were particularly interested in the number density, and in particular on, on these top and, and bottom surfaces. Uh, one thing we could do is perhaps f for a, a particular angle, look at how the number density varies along this midline, the center line uh, shown here. Um, and we can do that by right clicking on the results and adding a 1D plot group. We want to use solution two in this case, and we'll just use uh, the zero angle, um, but we could always change that later if we, we were interested in all the angles. I want to add a line graph in this case because I want to plot uh, the number density along a line. And I can select in the geometry uh, 
a line on long which I want to uh, plot the number density then I need to choose to plot not the incident molecular flux but the number density and we can see a plot along that arc of the number density let's say I wanted to look at uh, the lower surface that's also pretty straightforward um, I just duplicate this line graph clear that selection choose the lower line now in this particular case COMSOL has a sense for its arc length and we're going to see that the sense along this arc is opposite in direction uh, to, to that along the top arc so the plot looks like this uh, but it's really easy uh, to change that we can just change instead of plotting uh, the arc length we just use an expression we can see that the arc length goes from 0 to 1.25 uh, COMSOL has a, a built-in parameter uh, for the arc length so we just do 1.25 minus this, this arc length parameter plot and we see uh, we've reversed the direction uh, that S is defined in uh, or S1 is defined in so we can see the number density is pretty similar on the upper and lower surfaces uh, and it changes uh, fairly significantly along the, along the course of that, that beam line. Now we can use the average uh, operator that we defined at the beginning just to look at the average number density on the upper and lower surfaces. Um, so again we can do another 1D plot group. Um, in this case we want to do a global plot and we want to use the, the average operator that we defined previously, which was called avop1. We want to operate on the number density n, and this one gave us the upper surface. We'd also like to see the lower surface, so we can use avop2 that we also defined, and, and then I'm going to label that as the lower surface. So we can plot that if we go back up here and choose solution 2. We want to plot that over all parameters. Click plot and we can see now how the average number density uh, in the region of the beam path uh, changes as we change uh, the angle theta of the wafer normal with respect to the beam line. So we can also add labels, perhaps we want to put theta in. For the lower surface and the upper surface, we can put average number density. For the y axis, sorry. Um, and again, in, within here, you can type in Greek letters, you can uh, use special symbols, and so on and so forth, subscripts. Uh, so you can really make nice plots. Okay.